Hello, I'm Don Mitchell. Welcome back to Business Basics, the book that helps you understand how to lead and accomplish at least 8,000 times more in directing either a for-profit or non-profit organization. We've been looking at how to add 20 times more customers or beneficiaries, and today we'll continue in that search by looking at Lesson 20, which is to identify the ideal best practice. As always, let me begin by quoting from the book, the Bible, in this case, Book of Proverbs, at chapter 22, verses 19 through 21, in the New King James Version. So that your trust may be in the Lord, I have instructed you today, even you. Have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge, that I may make you know the certainty of the words of truth, that you may answer words of truth to those who send to you? This lesson focuses on step five, the eight-step process for making a 2,000% solution. Identify the ideal best practice. You'll also find material about this subject in the 2,000% Solution, the Affordable 2,000% Solution, the 2,000% Solution Workbook, as well as Appendix B of 2,000% Living. The ideal best practice for market expansion is going to be faster, more effective, and less expensive than what you identified for exceeding the future best practice in the last lesson. Let's start by reviewing the market expansion future best practice described in Lesson 19. We consider the initial iPhone product launch as the current best practice in Lesson 18. We then extended that success in the future by postulating the future best practice would be to equal or to exceed the iPhone success that occurred over a few months, however, within just a few hours. There are two obvious dimensions for exceeding the future best practice that scale to expanding beyond the iPhone sales results. First, expand the market by much more than the iPhone did. Second, achieve greater sales results than the iPhone did in its first few months by generating such sales in just a few minutes. I advise you to continue considering past those two dimensions by adding several other potentially interesting dimensions, including possibly accomplishing the sales at much less expense, gaining greater profits than the iPhone did, using the industry expansion breakthrough as a platform uh, to soon thereafter create a second 20 times market expansion, expanding customer and user end user benefits so much that the overall financial abilities of people and organizations to afford your offerings are increased by several hundred percent, and seven, to extend substantial benefits to those who aren't stakeholders. That's enough review. Let's look now more broadly to see what the ideal best practice is for launching a multi-billion dollar market very rapidly. I draw on boosting sales of the Harry Potter books to sketch out key elements of the ideal best practice for industry expansion. Each of the J.K. Rowling's books about Harry Potter hit the book publishing wholesale and retail industries like a record-breaking storm. Stores stayed open past midnight to host special launch parties. Package delivery companies lined up extra fleets of trucks to deliver millions of copies on the first morning of release, and millions of households saw normal routines disrupted while the latest book was devoured by one eager member of the family after another. If everyone could have gotten a copy at 12.01 a.m. on the first day of release, most eager list readers would have opted for that choice. If the delivery companies had infinite numbers of trucks and drivers, such performances uh, would have been possible, and clearly there should have also been an earlier than usual morning delivery option offered for early risers. The books didn't retail for as much as a billion dollars, and Rowling says she's done with Harry Potter, However, she later came back and wrote some more. But I suspect that she'll eventually begin writing another series, as she has. If she succeeds, the book-related offerings may eventually retail for over a billion dollars within one minute after midnight. How might such a result be accomplished? There's an obvious lesson to apply that book publishers don't appear to understand. Automatic renewals work better than individual sales for creating massive instant market growth. If people are satisfied with what you offer, Almost all will prefer the convenience of automatically receiving the next offering by allowing you to place a charge on a credit card they've authorized you to use. Most software upgrades work this way, so do subscriptions in some magazines. By offering automatic renewals, selecting Harry Potter could have concentrated more sales in a briefer time period. But people don't just read about Harry Potter, they also buy Harry Potter costumes and clothing, go to Harry Potter movies, and visit Harry Potter websites. What about tying in book renewals to package deals and food such other offerings. 
by bundling more elements together, you could sell more and make life easier for consumers. You also could make it more likely to receive a billion dollars in sales in one minute after a new book is released. Let's consider another rapid consumption thread. Limited editions of offerings. J.K. Rowling could offer all kinds of memorabilia and limited editions that would increase in value as scarce collectibles. Such items would be sold only in the first minute to those who bought the package deal included several offerings. But don't stop there. Let's consider experiences. Let's have Harry Potter theme events more elaborate than a bookstore can hold that are only available to those who bought the package and some of the limited edition memorabilia. She could rent the world's largest theme parks and resort areas in addition to making good use of the wizarding world of Harry Potter in Orlando, Florida, for such purposes and gain a piece of the vacation travel parts of the expanded revenue stream. There's also a big market for people who like to buy through eBay auctions. Rowling can put together lots of high-value items related to her newest book and whole auctions, ending exactly at 12.01 a.m. on the morning of book release. If she could provide enough sets, costumes, scripts, and other items from the movies and her book writing activities, she could undoubtedly add tens of millions of sales uh, in additional dollars. Rowling's intellectual property is very valuable as well. She could hold simultaneous auctions ending at 12.01 to license any unlicensed intellectual property associated with a new book. I could go on by adding more opportunities to concentrate sales. I'm sure you've gotten the concept by now. What are the key elements of the ideal best practice I've been describing? First, sell something new related to past successes such that almost every prior customer and user will want the new offering. Second, build a base of awareness and preference such that little expenditure is required to gain massive publicity. Third, maximize the attention and excitement by cramming as much activity and opportunity into one minute as possible. Four, pre-sell through contracts or subscriptions. Five, bundle a bigger batch of offerings together that include items that most customers and end users will eventually consider purchasing. Six, add scarcity appeal by providing limited editions only available at that moment. Seven, conduct auctions that end at the same moment for anything else you want to sell, for which there is a very limited supply and huge demand. Eight, provide experience-based services that are enhanced by the excitement of the one-minute event. Nine, create an event that everyone will want to talk about having participated in. As a possible model, consider the Super Bowl in the United States, where two teams play for the National Football League Championship. The average price paid for a seat in the stadium is probably over $4,000, and there are over 60,000 people present. Yet you can watch the game for no added event charge on any television set. Perhaps broadcasting a live theatrical performance of the new book to movie theaters with J.K. Rowling serving as host could provide part of such a draw. So what are your assignments? There are three. First, other than my suggestions, how could a Harry Potter book launch have been made much more successful? Two, what other high-value methods of market expansion could be added to the list of key elements I have just described? And third, what are the key lessons for expanding your market? So I look forward to your ideas on these, and I look forward to reading about your success and applying them. And come back soon, and we'll talk about how to approach the future best practice in the next lesson. Take care for now. May God bless you, your family, and all you do in the name of Jesus. In the meantime.